So uh, what are Jupyter Notebooks? Jupyter Notebooks are an open source web application that allows people to interact with live code, uh, equations. Um, Jupyter Notebooks also has uh, some amazing things called uh, widgets, which um, we won't really get into here, but I very much welcome everyone here to explore uh, how to use the widgets, because you can use the widgets in uh, uh, the Terra notebooks. So those are like uh, uh, a live way of, of interacting with um, things like, like equations. You can set uh, uh, like a slider dial to be the variable that, can, that uh, is inside of a certain equation, and then you can actually watch how that variable changes the output of the equation. Um, and so that goes also towards the concept of visualizations. Notebooks are uh, great for visualizations. Um, obviously, they contain all the relevant uh, uh, R visualization packages and um, the uh, uh, Python visualization packages. Um, I shouldn't say they contain them already, but you can um, easily install them in the environment. Um, and they also contain uh, narrative text. Um, and the narrative text inside of a Jupyter Notebook is much more fancy than uh, what uh, uh, software type people typically think of when they think of comment text. So typically when you think of comment text inside of code, there is, for whatever language you're working in, there is a certain syntax for commenting out a line. So maybe you just put a, a, a hashtag in front of the line and then everything after that line doesn't get interpreted by the, um, uh, by the kernel. That's a very simple way of adding comments. It's nice, but as you'll see in the Jupyter Notebook, we have much more uh, deep um, and, and really just a fancier way of uh, showing all sorts of uh, visualizations, of giving narrative text that is um, uh, uh, formatted in a way that is actually conducive to people being able to learn from uh, the notebook that you're sharing with them. So uh, one of the primary advantages, as we keep mentioning, of, uh, the, of Terra in general, but also of the uh, notebooks, is the elasticity of the kernel. So when you spin up a cluster, uh, you actually will tell the um, virtual machine what size it should be. So you can choose the number of CPUs. You can choose memory, disk size. Uh, in addition to that, um, if it just so happens that you want to run a workspace that someone else published and they had a very specific configuration for the cluster, then they can publish that configuration, the, uh, uh, generate a URL for that startup script, and you can put that URL right there and then click update. And so that will automatically set it to the configuration of uh, the workspace as it was designed. So it's very nice uh, that you can control the disk, uh, the disk space and the uh, CPUs. Um, you also get uh, this very nice real-time cost estimate. So up here uh, at the top right of your uh, window, you will always see this box indicating whether or not your cluster is running. So if there is a play button, that means that the cluster is not running. So you would click it, and then your stopped cluster would say starting, and then eventually the play button would turn into a pause button, and it would say that it is running, and you could click the pause button at any point to stop the cluster. Um, one reason why it's useful to know that is um, if you are working on multiple notebooks at the same time, uh, you might be wasting a little bit of money, because in the case of the uh, notebooks, you are charged by uh, uh, per unit time. So if you are running multiple uh, uh, notebooks in different windows, you might be getting double, triple, however many times uh, charged. So in many cases, it's a better idea to decide which notebook you're working on and make sure that every other cluster that you might have open on your desktop is paused. Um, that's the cluster configuration. So uh, there are multiple uh, ways to access 
notebooks. Um, we, saw, we saw the two uh, main ways of uh, cloning notebooks in the uh, three dot button. It's uh, up here and also down here. So that's on the workspaces. You'll also find the three dot button on every individual uh, notebook. And so you can always open a, you can always open a read only version of a notebook. A read only version obviously is one in which you can look at the code. In some cases you can even hit run on certain types of code, but you can't necessarily edit any code. So in order to be able to edit code, you need writer access. And that may depend on your access to that particular workspace. Um, and in general, you can always get around it because you can always clone your own version. So if you find a workspace where you really want to open an actual live editable version of a notebook, but either those notebooks are not accessible in that way or that workspace is a read-only workspace, you can just clone your own version of the workspace and then you'll be able to open the notebooks. Yes? Is there storage cost associated with the notebook when you're not running it? I'm sorry? Is the storage cluster? Is the storage cost or any other cost associated with it when you're not running the notebook when you hit pause? Um, I believe, I believe so. I believe uh, there's a small uh, cost for exactly what you said, like a penny an hour. While it while it's paused for kind of holding on to the data in in the workspace bucket that's for the notebook. Um, so yeah, so uh, you can open a read only version, which again you always see a read open. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, an, a read only version uh, of it when you're uh, generating the cluster. Um, you can just open the notebook. You can copy the notebook to another workspace. So you could actually click on that button. So I'll go back to my interface so everyone can see what that would actually do. So I can do this and I can click copy to another workspace and it'll say select a workspace. And here's all the workspaces that I could copy it into. Um, so yes, this is just a, a demonstration of the fact that we have a read-only version uh, uh, opening as a preview every time that we click on uh, one of these notebooks. And again, the reason for that is because sometimes that 10 to 15 minute waiting period, it's not very convenient to just sit and look at a blank screen, especially with these notebooks uh, uh, having a lot of uh, uh, versioning uh, issues you know, depending on however uh, uh, the laboratory that creates them uh, is keeping the different versions organized. And so you're trying to juggle which version uh, you're inside of. It's not very convenient to wait for 15 minutes and all of a sudden realize that you opened a version of the notebook that you thought was exactly right, but it was actually the one that you were working on last week and you need to open the newer one. So that's what uh, we put this nifty little feature um, with the preview in for. So uh, that kind of uh, gives us an uh, overarching idea of uh, what the notebook is and where it lives and how to share it. Um, there are some additional complications that can occur from multiple people working in the same notebook in the same workspace. But again, those are all issues that can just be avoided by always working in your own cloned workspace. So it is, it is possible to be working in the same uh, workspace in the same notebook and to kind of overwrite each other's changes. So to be on the safe side, just work in your own uh, uh, version of the lab. So uh, with that all being said, I'll just talk a little bit about the different types of cells that are available. So uh, you'll notice at the top of the menu, there's this menu bar and one of the boxes in the menu bar gives you an option for which type of cell 
you are working with. I'm just going to go back over here. Oops. So here you can see that right now in this field it says markdown. I can switch that to any one of these types. Uh, we'll mainly talk about markdown and code cells. So you'll see when I highlight this cell, now that changes to code. I could change either one of these, so I can change this to a code cell. And then I could run it, and of course it will make no sense. Because this is not uh, our code, this is, so now I get an error. If I, however, change it to markdown, so this is an unparsed markdown cell, and if I run it, then it parses the markdown cell. So if anyone isn't familiar with uh, Markdown, Markdown is uh, a separate uh, language. It's uh, uh, a lightweight uh, text formatting language, which is to say it doesn't perform logical operations, but it has uh, a lot of syntax for formatting. So uh, inside of the Jupyter Notebook, if you want to edit any particular cell, regardless of if it's a Markdown or a code cell, all you do is double click anywhere on the cell. I usually double click over here in this corner. And so that gives you kind of the raw version of the uh, cell before it's been run. And so this is an example of markdown syntax. So you can do something like that. So the hashtags uh, change the heading. Um, and there are uh, a variety of other helpful things that you can do with markdown. And if you want to learn more about them, there is a convenient uh, a section for help with Markdown, so it'll take you to a Markdown cheat sheet. You can also just Google Markdown cheat sheet. Um, it's very convenient. So there's all sorts of ways to uh, format text, um, embed images. So it's just it's a considerably uh, nicer affair than just having comments inside of your code. Um, So uh, 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 let me start, I guess, by uh, explaining what the purpose of this particular uh, notebook is. Um, so this is our R environment setup notebook. So whenever we create a virtual machine, a cluster, we uh, are able to uh, install certain configurations on that cluster. Uh, that includes the uh, computational power of the cluster, but also uh, we can install uh, certain environmental uh, factors that help us uh, run other notebooks. So if you want to uh, install some packages that you, will, that you know will be useful in a lot of other notebooks that you're trying, you can have an environment set up notebook like this that just has uh, some lines to basically upload any relevant libraries. The same is true for um, extensions that actually work uh, on the Jupyter Notebooks um, uh, interface itself. So for example, this fancy table of contents that um, you can see on the left here. This is actually a uh, Jupyter Notebook extension that uh, I believe we have it enabled um, on the uh, 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 notebooks that are available in Terra anyway, but there are a lot of other Jupyter extensions that if you run them on an environment setup notebook, then subsequently every other notebook in that workspace will be able to do that trick, like have um, a navigable table of contents, um, the use of widgets, so widgets are another uh, extension. Um, you can also change the color themes, that kind of thing. Um, so you would run that uh, in a separate notebook, and then once you've done that, it's now true uh, on your cluster. So uh, the purpose of this notebook is to do exactly that. So in many cases, when we run through these cells, you'll notice that not a lot seems to happen. And that's all right. So you'll notice that whenever we click Run on a particular cell, what happens is this empty square parens gets populated with a little asterisk. The asterisk indicates that the cluster is thinking. So it's doing the work. Another place where you can see that is up here. So you can see this symbol means that the kernel is busy. And it says, if I mouse over it, says, it says kernel. It should say kernel busy. But it's kind of in an in-between moment. 
once, once this dot becomes empty again and this asterisk turns into a number, then it will say kernel idle, which is to say it's ready for the next command. So right now, uh, what it's doing is installing these quote unquote generally useful R packages. So it's thinking, it's doing more. You're getting warning messages. You have this alarming pink color. It's kind of important to note that that is not necessarily a problem. This is a perfect example where it's actually not a problem. So a lot of times you'll get these warning messages and the warning messages don't necessarily mean that uh, uh, the thing that you're trying to do hasn't been successful. Um, if later on down the line you uh, are noticing some sort of problem, then it might behoove you to go back and see what sorts of warnings um, your uh, uh, notebook gave you. So there might have been a problem with the installation of some of these packages. Um, but in general, just don't worry about it. Um, yes? So when you run an environment setup, is it specific to a workspace or is it more specific to you as a user and the cluster that you've just run up? It is, it is specific to um, the workspace and, and the cluster. Okay. So not to the user. Okay, got it. So then I guess what I'm asking is if I'm working on two workspaces at a time, I don't know if that would ever occur. Yeah, you know what I'm asking? Yeah, yeah, no, like it's individual to the billing project and uh -huh. the user. Okay, so yeah. you're you mm -hmm. inside your billing project. If you're in a different billing project mm -hmm. than you're you, it's different. But if you're in a different workspace, you're still you. Yep, perfect. Okay, got it. Yep. Yeah. Ah, good. So this cell has stopped running. So it, it finished. Um, you'll notice that the asterisk was, re was replaced by the number three. That's just because um, this is the third command that has been run in this notebook since the last time the kernel was restarted. So I could actually rerun all, I can just rerun this. It won't be a problem. So now that says number four instead. So uh, you have multiple uh, options for running the cells that just make things convenient. You can either click on this run button as I usually do. Um, the hotkey is uh, shift return or shift enter. I can just do that. There's also these fairly convenient uh, options in the uh, cell menu. So if you have a very long uh, notebook for whatever reason and you're somewhere in the middle of it and, or rather you're, you, you come towards the end and there's an issue and you've decided that it must be coming from this one cell that's somewhere in the middle. So you go up, back up to the middle, you change that one thing, and now you want to run everything that's below. You just use this option right here. So run all below. So I'm just going to go here to where we paused. And I'm going to say run all below. And you'll see in the uh, table of contents, there's a very nice feature also. Uh, it's Every section is red until that part finishes. Then it turns yellow as it's finishing. And there we go. So we've now run this whole notebook. And again, part of the reason to do that, and hopefully everybody just went ahead and uh, did it, whether you clicked all the way through or uh, if you just hit run all cells at the very beginning, it's fine either way. Part of the reason for the exercise is that it's all right to sometimes have notebooks where you literally just click run and there aren't any uh, important outputs to keep track of. This is still a very important part of the setup process. So if you ever find yourself opening setup notebooks um, or even just the setup portion early on in a notebook and you're just clicking run, 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 and you're thinking, what am I doing? A lot of times that's exactly what you should be doing. Um, so, I think uh, that gives us an idea of uh, the difference between uh, markdown and code. So I'll talk a little bit more in depth about how the actual code cells work now. So we can add code cells very easily using that button. There are some other hotkeys as well. I like to use the little plus button. So here I have a code cell, and this uh, code cell will run in R. I can choose the uh, language of the kernel very easily, and I can change it at any point. 
So I would just click on the kernel menu and go down to change kernel. And these are the options of the kernels that are actually available to us. So we have both Python 2 and 3. We have R. We have these PySpark uh, options, which are, um, I believe, not a part of the, uh, uh, our current um, workshop that we're doing today. Um, so obviously, we will be focusing on R. But just to show you how simple it is, I can just switch over to Python. I have to wait a little bit while it decides. And there we go. Now the kernel is idle, and we're running on Python 3. So if I tried to run any of these cells, we'd get an error, unless for some coincidental reason there was a cell in here that had syntax that <coughs> works for both. <coughs> Excuse me. So just to show everyone how uh, the uh, cluster works in terms of uh, doing calculations. So if I do something like this, I have successfully run this operation, and this information is now stored somewhere on the cluster. Uh, if you're familiar with uh, uh, Python, you'll know that just running that or just running this won't actually do anything. Oh, I'm sorry, I guess it does. Usually you have to click print. So you would have to click print, and that will give you the output. There, I did it without the little out. Um, in the meantime, I will add some stuff to this x. So I'll run x equals x plus 1. I'll run that. That's fine. And I'll just go back to it and run it about an extra three times. So now the value of x, the modified value, has been stored in the cluster. And when I run this print, I get the new value. So very simple example, but just to give everyone an idea of what is happening and where it's happening. So sometimes you can't see it, but it's definitely still happening. Um, so we have uh, uh, all sorts of. Uh, different types of code and commands that you can run in the um, uh, code cells. Particularly, you can generate these very nice visuals. And if you've worked with any Python or R-based IDE, then you know exactly how that works. It works exactly the same in Jupyter Notebook. If you have imported the proper packages and you uh, run the uh, uh, visualization uh, output, then it will just generate it right here very convenient and very quick. Uh, and it's very easy to edit it. So you can kind of keep active track of uh, what's going on with your data. So this is just a slide that shows where uh, you can find a bunch of helpful information. Um, and then here I have a list of hotkeys for anyone who uh, wants to be a real cowboy with their Jupyter Notebook. Um, and you should be able to uh, uh, find this slideshow online. So if you want to pull this page up for yourself and have it as you're uh, working on notebooks, feel free. Um, yeah, this is, this, is the main, this is the main hotkey that everyone uses, Shift Enter, to uh, evaluate the cell. Um, <clears throat> so I'll. Uh, uh, probably cover uh, more of the uh, user interface in later sessions, but just um, just to uh, uh, leave off on this session, I'll show you where you can find these various resources. So in the hamburger menu, uh, you can either go to your workspaces and search for public workspaces, so those will already be uh, shown to you so long as you click on that show public workspaces option up there. But there's also a set of uh, things that we offer inside of our library. Um, so you'll be able to explore data sets in uh, other sessions. Code and Tools is a place where you can go to find specific uh, 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 portions of um, workflow analyses. And then we have this nice showcase and tutorial section where you can actually uh, access what we call featured workspaces. So the very last uh, session uh, today, I'll 
uh, take you through this featured workspace down here. Um, reproducibility case study. So if you're ever interested in a, any particular uh, featured workspace that already exists, just go right to this section and make yourself a clone and uh, do, whatever, do re whatever you want in your own cloned version. And also, if you want to learn anything about it, just go to the dashboard and read all of the background information. And you should also be able to find a contact point if you're, if you're very curious. Um, so with that, I think that's exactly uh, time for, oh, are we? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll hand it off to Ali. She's going to take you guys through a big query uh, example. So we've already run the uh, environment setup notebook. <laughs>